Hey there, how's it going everyone? My name is Mr. Elaine and I'm excited to be starting our first official art history lecture together. The first thing I'll show you is a short video titled The History of Art in Three Minutes. It's a cool video. You're not expected to know, to know everything in the video. It goes pretty fast. After that, we will do something known as visual analysis where you will learn to practice looking at and writing about as well as talking about art pieces. The last thing we'll do together is take notes on the dating system used in art history. Take good notes and let's begin. The history of art in three minutes. The oldest art we know of is about 40,000 years old. It was painted on cave walls or sculpted from rocks and consisted mainly of people killing animals or each other. An exception to that rule is the famous Woman from Willendorf, an abstract sculpture of a faceless obese lady wearing no clothes except a shower cap. After a while, people started to write things down, and proper history began. Civilizations developed in Egypt, Persia, Mesopotamia, Greece, Rome, India, and China. This highly significant period in art history gave the world pots, earthenware, crumbling temples, more pots, gods, warriors, warriors on pots, gods on pots, cats, god cats, and god cats on pots. In the Middle Ages, the West was dominated by the Church, who disputed the validity of all the old gods and says there was, in fact, only one. Art could no longer feature unrealistic things like multi-limbed elephant dancers or winged bearded man-horses, but had to be about things that happened in the Bible. This more realistic, down-to-earth approach gave us morose men in yellow hats, morose men in pink shawls, and lots and lots of glowing babies. Then came the Renaissance and a return to the material world. Real-life places were rendered in three dimensions, convincing use of perspective became widespread and the human body was shown as it really is. Many images, however, remained religious in nature, and so also featured flying men with laser beam eyes done realistically. Eastern art continued to develop in its own distinct way, often showing scenes from nature or the everyday world like mountains, people kissing, or men in dressing gowns getting angry at other men in dressing gowns for riding albino dogs. Then came modern art and the dawn of the isms. Impressionism, Expressionism, Cubism, Dadaism, Surrealism, and other isms too numerous or rude to mention. The experiences of global war, the march of technological progress, and the popularization of theories about the universe and the human mind, as espoused by the likes of Einstein and Freud, left their indelible mark on our species. The artistic gloves were off and it was time to experiment. Shapes, splats, blocks of color, ghost pokes, weeping women, fluorescent lights, urinals, and unmade beds. All could be considered. Okay, so hopefully that video was at least somewhat entertaining to you. Look very carefully and attentively at this painting on the left that you see here and spend about three to five minutes just writing whatever comes to your mind as you're looking at this image. So again, for three to five minutes, just keep your pencil moving, writing whatever comes to your mind as you're looking at this image here. So now that you have had time to analyze the painting on your own and you've also answered some questions that help you go deeper in trying to interpret the meaning, I'm going to give you the artist name and the title for the painting. We have Eugene Delacroix as the artist and the painting titled Salim and Zuleika. So the story is based on a romantic poem about Lord Byron titled The Bride of Abydos, first published in 1813. The setting is in Turkey. So we have the tragic fate of Zuleika and her lover, the pirate Selim. So in order to avoid a loveless marriage arranged by her father, Zuleika escapes at night from the harem tower in which she has been held. In the scene shown in Delacroix's painting, the lovers await rescue as you can see by the sea, they're pursued by men and armed, uh, who are armed and bearing torches. Sensing the approach of her pursuers, Zuleika tries to restrain Selim. And in the tragic climax of the tale, Selim is shot dead by Giafer, who is the father of Zuleika. And his body is washed up to sea. And unfortunately, Zuleika dies of grief. What we just did was something known as visual analysis. So write down the definition. 
to recognize and understand the visual choices the artist made in creating the artwork. By observing and writing about separate parts of the art object, you will come to a better understanding of the art object as a whole. We're going to continue practicing visual analysis. Looking at these two images here, look carefully at these paintings. One is French, the other is American. Guess which is which? And here are the answers revealed for you. In the Lakawana Valley painting you see here, it's commemorating the onset of America's industrial age. The location is Scranton, Pennsylvania. And it was also a philosophical, philosophical dilemma that confronted many Americans in the 1850s. So this painting serves as a poignant pictorial reminder of the ephemeral nature of the American dream. Jean Baptiste was one of the great landscape painters of the 19th century, coming from the Barbizon School, which was a school that they, they, they got inspiration directly from nature. And it also has a poetic feel to it as well. In this mini lesson, we're going to be talking about dates in art history, which is important for you to understand so you can place the right period in the right context with the correct uh, time and setting. I'm going to use, use these different colors to take notes with. So you need a piece of paper if you want to follow along with me and use the same colors I do. I have here. Um, this blue, it's a light blue, a green dark blue, red, and black. And I definitely encourage you to also write down exactly what I write down as well. We're going to start off titling our paper. Writing down dates in art history. If you don't have color pencils, you can also use markers. Or just a regular pen or pencil. To start out, at the very beginning, in prehistory, things were unwritten. There was no record keeping and no way of keeping track of time. So when you try to put a year to an event, or try to place an error, we use BCE or CE. I'm gonna grab a green color pencil. BCE stands for before the common error. And then CE, I'm going to grab a red color pencil. CE means common error. The years before one is before the common error. And as we move closer to the present day, we're moving more towards the common error. So when writing dates, it's very important that you write BCE. 
if you're referring to anything before the year one. And there's also, there's no year zero. So to see this on the timeline, if you're more visual like myself, we're gonna draw out a timeline. So I'm gonna take my green color pencil. We're gonna start with a line, uh, a line. So we know time starts, time's gonna start here for instance. So this is the start. We're gonna move forward. So this, this line represents the progression of time from the start until you know currently today. I'm gonna get a black color pencil and divide this line, draw like a little line here that's kind of divided, divide our timeline. And then I'm gonna grab the light blue color pencil. So now we're gonna draw an arrow going backwards, going this way to the left. It'll look like this. prehistory so we're going that the arrow goes back in time and then we're going to grab a red color pencil draw another arrow going to the right moving forward in time some numbers so you can see and better understand the difference between the common error and the and before the common error. So starting off here on the far left, we're gonna do a large large number. So let's say sixteen thousand eight before the common error are going to be extremely large compared to those in the common error. I'm going to switch and use a black pen so I can have, make sure I have more space. So that's the numbers up in the start, prehistory are going to be larger. As they move forward, moving towards the common error, they're going to decrease. So this the next number, I'm going to just give you an example, 8,000. B, C, E. And I'll give you one more example. 1,000 B, C, E. I'm gonna run out of time, <clears throat> run out of space, but 1,000 B, C, E, right here. Okay, now let's start the common error. So I'm just gonna say your number one. One, C, E. These numbers are going to increase as they move to the right. I'm going to do 2000 C E. And then one more example 2019 C E. Again, you don't necessarily need to write the CE unless you're being completely specific with the year. So typically you won't see, we, won't, we don't see CE in our current dating system. We don't see 2020 CE or 1988 CE. Next we're going to talk about centuries. So for centuries, I'm going to use a blue color pencil. Um, here, so we're going to write centuries, and 
These are all going to be divided up into, into years. I'm sure you're familiar with the, the terminology. You can use any color you want to. I'm going to go ahead and do uh, green for my centuries. So the years 1 to 99 is going to be the first century. It's our first set of 100 years. Next we have the years 100 to 199 is second century. Okay, I'm going to give you some examples, and you can, you can see the pattern now. So the years 200 to 299 will be 3rd century, and the year 300 to 399 will be 4th century, and so on. So let's say we have the year 7, I'm just writing down a, a random year, so 734. Which century would that be in? That's the 8th century. And I'll give you one more example. So the year 1540 okay, so that would be in the 16th century. So you're just adding a number a moment. 16th century. So 700s, that's the years. So you just uh, go up one number to 8 for the century. Again, this is like the 1500s. So we're going to say, what's the next number after the 1500s? 16th. So 16th century. And then the last one example of a date we're going to talk about is it's circa. So we're at C I. represents is an approximation. So that's an approximate date around or about. So approximate date. 